Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the Six Feet Under podcast for people under six feet. I'm Mike. Sheldon. Edward. Welcome back. Welcome back. Have you guys been watching the uh, World Cup recently? I have. I don't. Why? Because I don't watch soccer. Hmm. He's Sheldon is a fan of one sport, only one sport. What was the sport? Basketball? Basketball. Basketball. I, I, do you even watch sports anymore? I don't think you watch that sport, many sports anymore. I only watch basketball when it's playoff time. Yeah. I don't really watch basketball. Or when there's an Asian guy on the on the thing. What? Right? Like, for example, Jeremy Lin, when he was popping off, you were watching basketball. I was in high school at the time. I watched basketball in general at the time. Oh, to true. be honest, if, if, if Jeremy was, was in it. Oh, you know who I watch right now a lot? Who? Dwight Howard in Taiwan. Oh, you like... <laughs> Dwight, Howard, Dwight Howard in Taiwan is probably the most amusing thing ever. Why? Just watching him, like, he was like... He's like, how would the like... How would the don't like? It's just like him, just seeing him as a big guy, right. experience like, like the culture. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just seeing a big guy like that experience culture there. It's like, it, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and he speaks in third person, right? Yeah, it's kind of funny. And then he's like, he's like, he's like, I got my, my first experience as a black man getting a haircut in Taiwan. And then he said, how his hair like? Yeah, no fucked idea up. how to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. I, oh fuck! That was a hard segue. I was gonna go into a segue, but then, but then it got derailed by a Dwight Howard that's story. Right, right. Maybe you don't watch soccer because of the fact that growing up, your parents just signed you up for like piano lessons and Ooh, you know burn. classes. How do you feel about that? Huh? Do you think it's true? He got signed up for abacus class. Yeah, just I did. I did waste. do abacus class. Did you do any that's like so sports waste. growing up? Did you guys do any? Did your parents sign you up for any? Not not like school sports. Yeah, that doesn't count. Like, swimming and basketball. No, your you parents didn't, signed you, you up. Sign, sign you up for swimming. Your they signed parents. up for swimming. Class, they did. class, right? To learn, learn swimming. I went to I went to swimming classes. I went to swimming team, and then I went to basketball class. You, you went to swimming team? Yo, you, you have the a... most progressive Chinese parents ever. Wait, 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 you got signed up. When did you get signed up for a professional swim? I'm sorry, uh, a, a rep swimming team. Yo, I was in the Markham Aquatic Club. What, what the hell? You didn't know? No. Wait, wait, wait. wait what age? From like four years old. From like maybe grade grade seven to grade. Nine, maybe grade seven, grade nine. What? What? The grade hell? six, grade nine, maybe. Maybe this is why he's so boxy. Like he's so like. Yeah, I was in Mark Aquatic Club. Holy shit, yo, Sheldon, you have very progressive parents. What? Your parents never signed up for any sports classes. What the? F- they never signed me up for one sports class. Nothing. Not swimming class. No. Chun, how'd you learn I mean, swim? No, no, yo, swimming. Mike, Mike, come, don't come on. I literally went to basketball class with you on Saturday morning. I know. No, no, wait, 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 wait. That's not basketball. That's sign you off for a Chinese guy teaching you how to play basketball. That's ba- that's a basketball that's class. Basketball. I know, basketball. but it's not it's not like the same as you sign up for rep. Like you were there playing basketball, like for rep league. That's because I asked after the fact that but I would join like regular Chinese basketball class first. No, my parents are more like this. I'm like, hey, I want to play basketball. She's like, okay, why don't you learn for an hour? You go on a Saturday after Chinese school, and then you learn basketball for an hour from this Asian guy, and then you go home. That's what it is. It's not Wait, yours. Yours is traveling, going to tournaments. Like, Wait, that was after the fact of a bit, though, but it started off like that. Yeah, I went to, I went to I basketball try, I try class to every Saturday, no. and then no. I went to badminton class as well. Badminton? Listen, what are you, bro? Sheldon, what are you? Do you have white parents or do you have Wait, Asian parents? No, 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 no. Badminton is very Asian. The thing is that <laughs> why do I feel like I'm learning about all these things, but... So I was on the high school swim team with you for four years, and you didn't tell me once that you were on like a a Markham Aquatic Club. You didn't. Me- he didn't mention once, right? <laughs> nah, this is the first time you, I'm finding out for the first time as well. No. Why didn't you mention it? I did. No, you didn't. If you mentioned, you would have been the same. You would have been the like the other lo- competitive swimming division or whatever. Really? Where James Sun was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. It's true. Come but on, you didn't guys. mention it. Anyways, mention the one, the though. point of this the point of this the discussion heck? is to show that like today we're gonna be talking about. Asian parents and how it like shaped your world view and perspective mm, and okay mm. right and I'm very surprised because that really matches your parents to be quite honest knowing your parents are very very chill wait all right uh, I'm a point is that I don't think that your parents putting you in a bunch of classes means that your parents are progressive in fact actually I think more classes your parents put you in outside of school the potentially the less progressive they are. Wait, wait, wait. I'm saying what classes they put you in matters. My mom put me in every single class because she wanted... She, really? She was a tiger mom in every single way you can possibly imagine. Every single way. But I also think that's because I used to have asthma, so she wanted to put me in lots of sports so I can get, right. get, get healthier. But what did you... Yeah. I, I don't I don't think... So you're, you're acting like me being in basketball, badminton swimming is like isolated things, but... Let me tell you my typical week, okay? Okay. Monday, get off, get out of school. Extra French class. 
Tuesday, get out of school. Morning, swim practice. After school, swim practice. Wednesday, math class. Thursday, English. Friday, what do I have Friday? I forgot. Friday, Friday was basketball. Saturday, I had an 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 extra on top of what I had another math class. Okay. Wait, and that? then Sunday's free. Wait, where does Abacus come in? Yeah. I, I think my parents were progressive, but I mean, yeah. I think they put me in all these classes so that I could keep staying out of trouble and I could stay True. occupied, right? But how? No, that that just makes me wonder the question. Then, how come you're so bad at basketball? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Michelle, I didn't want to say this. <laughs> kidding, I, I didn't want to say this in actual it's a camera. Joke, it's a joke, it's a My joke. question is, how come you actually weren't that good at swimming? <laughs> no, that's a genuine question I had. Like, I'm not even roasting. I'm not even roasting. Like, I'm wait. genuinely confused. I was pretty Co- decent you, at you swimming. You and him, you were slightly faster than him. And yeah, this guy yeah. was pretty and, bad. And, yo, and I didn't even swim. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I did is, is, uh, is uh, what's it called? It's not bronze cross. Yeah. Grade eight. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna roast him about basketball because yeah. he's pretty good at basketball. Yeah. I'm gonna roast him about swimming because I'm genuinely confused. I went, I swam with you four years in high school. Yeah. I mean, Jay, just because you're part of the Mark Aquatic Club doesn't mean you're actually good, right? Wait, was it like wake up at five a.m. kind of like go to swimming, or is it just like two hours after school? You know. No, wake up at five a.m. for swimming. <laughs> you woke up at 5 a.m. <laughs> no, oh what's that? God, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> you didn't know I went to early morning right. swim class. That's pretty no, crazy. No idea, That's bro. pretty crazy. I mean, like, dude, your parents just kept you. Do you think it's an Asian parent thing to keep them occupied all the time growing up? I think. Um, so I always think that there's differences in communities. Mm-hmm. You were part of the like Mandarin speaking community, and obviously when you were growing up, okay. there weren't as many Mandarin speakers around you okay whereas mm. for me like the community was very heavily dominated by like cantonese people right and so my mom for parenting stuff she didn't really know what she was doing but she would constantly talk to other parents and they're like i'll put my kid in this and then she was like okay, I'll put my kid in the same thing. i see so i, I see. think that's the that's the difference in why i was enrolled in so many things was because my mom was constantly talking to other chinese moms right and then she just did whatever they did i think yeah. i think you had a different case as well because of the fact that your mom was always like really busy working yeah. So she wanted to put you through these different things, like yeah. after school. Also, you're just gonna like twiddle your fingers. Yeah, I think what determines whether or not your parents are extremely Asian, like you know the Asian tiger yeah. mom thing, is do they give you a choice in doing things you enjoy for these extra classes? Which right. my mom did not. Right. I'm assuming what, what, you what were you enrolled in? For example, okay, so I had I had uh, math class on like some Tuesdays and Thursdays. I had math class again on Saturdays. I had English class on Saturdays and then I got sent to the library for the rest of Saturday. <laughs> or or like the bookstore where I, she library. would drop me off at the bookstore and just leave me there. So I have no She's choice. like, learn. <laughs> learn. Hey, <laughs> no, she dropped me off at the bookstore and said, here, now read the entire day. I'll come pick you up at like 8 <laughs> So obviously as a kid, I had nowhere to go except for yeah, read books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and then I, on, uh, I had piano classes, I think on on. Th- Thursdays as well after school and then I also had Chinese class and then I had Mandarin class with you mm-hmm. and then some days and, and then I would have to go swimming every single day as well. so I, I had everything I had everything yeah. but the thing is some of them I enjoyed and some of them I didn't enjoy right. but the thing what made my mom like a tiger mom is that even if I was begging her like hey I have no interest in this I don't want to do it too bad that's Facts. the difference mm. whereas I think your parents you said your mom said here you have a choice between piano and abacus and you chose abacus yeah. my mom I didn't have a choice well, I didn't you choice. chose abacus well no I got to, I got to piano to grade 4 and I and I think my mom saw like I just absolutely hated piano in my life yeah and then she was like alright next thing and she put me in abacus that's that's the difference between a tiger mom just because you hate it does not mean that you can give up yeah 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 that, that's my mom's attitude oh, actually I wasn't the, able to give up I think I think I just complained so hard and after like my mom tried two three times and then yeah. I, I didn't do it I, I just I just kind of quit and then I got to grade seven when we were in music class and I was like bro how am I supposed to get bitches if I don't have any musical talent right yeah, yeah. and then I asked my mom I was like mom like I, I need I need I need to learn piano and then she put me back in piano so that was wait oh. you think bitches you think you get bitches by playing piano I'm pretty sure you can hey get wait, 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 wait 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 don't call them bitches call them Woman. Okay, do you okay. think you can get bitches by playing piano? <laughs> yeah, that's fucking, yo, I, I always thought like I always thought it's cool to play guitar. I was like, I get all oh. the bitches playing guitar, right? And then my mom is like, how about violin instead? Look, 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 look. It's different type of girls. Different type of girls. Like, what do you like mean? Come on, you, you, okay, are they piano? Yo, no girl is gonna get her panties wet for violin. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that, that, wait, why you gotta that, hit on me first? Wait, that that it's is true. true. But but piano and guitar are top two panties. No, winners. bro. Think. Okay, what artist? Do you think about growing up in the 2000s that were killing it on piano? Bro, it, 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 
Stevie Wonder? Dude, if, <laughs> no, if, it's not about the artist, dude. No, Elton Tay-Yang, John? When Taeyang played that piano right, in wedding right. dress, but that's, girl's panties wait, dropped. Wait, that's great. Seven, though. That's, that's, that's 07. I'm talking about, like, I grew up with Simple Plan. I yeah, was like, yeah, these are true. the cool guys oh, playing yeah, yeah, guitar yeah, no, in a no, band no, no, with no, drums. Yeah, that's fine. It's that's fine. cool. It's fine, but I, I grew up in the K-pop era where like, I'm going to get some of these K-pop lovers. You grew girls. up in the same era. You're the same age. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway, uh, my mom played me in piano, and then I quit. And that back when when like that like K-pop stuff started coming out, Big Bang and yeah. that stuff, yeah. I was like, okay, man, well, I want to learn some piano. You wanted to learn piano. And I asked her to put me in piano class, and that's when I actually took it like pretty far. But your mom was telling you to choose between two, probably like violin or piano. And no, you no, no, piano. no, no. I had no choice. I had no choice in anything. I was either piano or nothing or no music. Oh, so, so, so I mean, you, you, lucky you, you happened, like your mom was like, excellent. You picked the choice that I want you to pick. Yeah. But if you had said, I want to pay, play the um, guitar, no, it'd be no, different. No, 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 it'd be different. She probably wouldn't let she me. Wouldn't yeah. let she you, wouldn't right? let me until after I, I, I'm, I'm good at piano, which is actually what happened after. And I, I, I was too late. I didn't have enough time to do Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, for, for me, even when I wanted to explore, explore music again, I told my mom I wanted to play the, uh, the ocarina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean, that's a video game. <laughs> and, 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 and she bought me one as I'm playing it. No, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, feel, I feel like your mom is very, um, very, uh, like, she's like, let me foster his interests. Where I think uh, growing up, my, my parents were like, let, let me foster our interests, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and live vicariously through this, through, through this kid. The reason why my mom put me in the things she did was because that was what was a status symbol in the Asian community. Playing piano is a status symbol in the Asian community. To say, like, my kid can play piano, my kid can perform the piano, status. that's a status symbol. It's not actually what she enjoys my kid. or what I enjoy. It's what the community What about enjoys. guitar? No. No, it guitar, guitar, guitar is not on the then street, bro. Then why the fuck is, is the guy the then how the hell is our who not a status that's symbol? That's not a status symbol. But violin is. How is violin a because, status symbol? Because you don't play Arhu at, 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 the, at the concert hall. The people who sell the concert hall are, unless you're in a band, which does not, does not ex- like that rock band doesn't exist okay. in Asian culture. It's pianists and violinists or whatever that represent so-called Asian high class. I'm That's out. the reason why they put, it, they put me in that. Yeah. Along with every single other thing that, that she put me in, aside from like things for my health, yeah. like math, English. Math these is, are all is that's, that's positive for your health? No, no. Ma- I mean, like, ma- math, math is, is just is just like it, it, is, is, it gets Asian moms wet. Yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. It's a breaking thing. It's like to so say, to you, say my kid is like. Let me ask you: Do you do you feel high class? I didn't do it for that. I mean, I, I don't know. It's not really a high class thing. It's just what the Asian community believes. Right, right. Especially right. back then, like it, I'm, mm-hmm. maybe it might still be the case. Right, right. It might still be the case. But I, I I'm gonna say one right. thing now is like looking back at it, I'm kind of thankful that she put me through that because now I have a new skill. It's hard new. Like for example, um, when did you last play violin? <laughs> Like about three months ago. Actually. Oh really? He's at home. Yeah, you could you could literally like pick up a song and then oh I like this fun movie and I can play it myself. Ah. And um and even something like Chinese, I feel like I, I could have taken like Chinese class a little more seriously when I was younger. It, but back then it was really really dreadful, man. It, can I just, I just was dreadful. Growing yeah, up. yeah yeah yeah. Chinese it classes were so bad. Man. It's one of those things. In hindsight, I don't. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not angry at her for putting me through that, but. I, how I, the hell did you go through twelve years of Chinese school and not know anything? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> how to read or write? Like yeah, like, I know. Right, you went through twelve rep- years of Chinese school and legit in just six weeks with this kind of blueprint. I know more than you. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> come on! That's because that that's because you're a, that, that's because you're a Cantonese speaker learning Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. That's burn, right? but that's also but, true because kind of blueprint is something that actually com- works. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's I'm true, not. I'm true. genuinely. I'm, yeah. But I, yeah. I am genuinely curious. Like, why? Because you don't go to Chinese. Cl- have you not watched our skits before, man? You don't go to Chinese class to learn anything. You you go to Chinese class to to chill with your friends <laughs> and learn through osmosis. You no, know, like no, no, you no. like you hear a few words here, you hear a few words there, and that's about it. You had like zero genuine interest to learn in Chinese school. Yeah. But just being in that environment it also helped a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what, okay, let me ask you one question. What's the most fond memory of of that you have? That okay. Let me not use the word fun. But what's the most vivid vem- memory you had growing up with your Asian parents? Something to do with the Asian parents. You're like, damn. I look back and you're like, damn. That's the most Asian thing ever. Most Asian thing ever. Yeah. Do you have any stories? Do you have any stories, Sean? I can think of. Or or you go that damn. That's the most non-Asian thing ever. Oh, yeah, what, or, when you started realizing your parents are not the same as other like stereotypically Asian stereotypically parents. Asian exactly. Okay. Asian parents. I started realizing my parents because okay my parents are pretty stereotypical in like the math academics and stuff like that yeah but i started realizing my parents were not stereotypical in high school when they bought me when when, when they were like oh if you need alcohol we can get some alcohol yeah that's crazy or if like or, or like after parties um you buy some condoms if, too 
No, no, no. After parties, it was like it was like, oh, your friends need a place to stay. They can come, they come stay at my place. Yeah. And it was so in contrast to you who had to sneak out to yeah, go to parties. Yeah. For me, my parents were. Let me know where you're going. Uh, I can drive you if you want to the party, yeah. but just let me know where you're going. You basically had white parents. Yeah, yeah, white parents. But in, growing up in an Asian community, I that's, that's, that's what you had. I, 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 if you went up to your mom, and be like, "Shut up, mom! I want to say thing." I don't think she would have cared. She no, care. no, no, no. My, but I had She'd the like, same okay. things. I had the same things of like Asian mom comparing you to everyone it, else. It, exactly. That's why you're a white per, white parents grown up in an Asian community. They were influenced by the Asianness around them, but deep down, they were white parents. No, they so? are Asian they parents up. who were influenced by the by the white Western community. That's what it was. So th- th- my th- dad, my dad said, "I know no matter what, you're gonna try and go party. That's so a, I would rather know where you're going." That's a white mentality. Dad. Yeah, it's a white mentality. That's a white mentality. Dad. Dad. Yeah, the reason dad. why Sheldon, is your parents came to Canada way before our parents did. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just the truth. Like, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your dad did university here, right? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Like, like, like my mom. No, no, she didn't. She, she. She's an immigrant. Came, Immigrant yeah, parent. she immigrated here when she was like 27 or so. Yeah. And she grew up with like that Eastern culture, like right. entirely Eastern culture. Yeah. Same with yours, right? Yeah. Exactly. So that that's the main difference. Yeah. Most vivid memories I have of my mom are ones that involve like... Hanger? Hanger. Uh, I've uh, never the, seen... like I've actually never seen that. <clears throat> of course like you never seen You don't live in my house, bro. <laughs> no, getting you beat grew- with hanger. Dude, is... It, so the okay the thing about hangers is there's various ones okay <laughs> there's the metal ones okay those actually look like they hurt the most but they actually don't and then there's the middle the middle uh plastic ones middle thickness yeah those are whipping pain all right and then the third one is the wait, wait the you're wiki- talking about those thin wire ones and the metal ones the, the right? metal, yeah, the, the, those look like they hurt but they actually don't hurt that much so those are the thin metal ones yeah, right? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. but but those can be a little dangerous because okay. my mom was always Careful, because those can be a little dangerous because they right. get in your eyes. Yeah, and they like, what? let's say by accident, like a little, little hook, the metal from against your eyes, that's actually severe damage, right? Okay. So, the the this and then she and Critical then there was damage. like the um, the medium frame plastic ones, yeah. and those hurt the most. That's the sweet spot those, to the, use the, <laughs> because that is the greatest <laughs> amount of teaching pain without serious injury. Okay. And then the really serious ones are the thick. Uh, plastic ones, the ones that you use hang like winter jackets with, oh. and those ones are potentially bone crushing. Right? Bone crushing. Right? Oh, so so my mom, my, my mom, mom was very careful to only choose the ones that <laughs> cause the most pain damage. She actually went. But not actually. She actually went full on select your weapon. Yeah, yeah. select your yeah, weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, She's like, you're like, you're story. Like some sort of video. You just like bad. You just bad. She goes in the closet. Like so, so, so basically, you're telling me that she uses like submachine guns. And not not like no rocket yeah, launchers, yeah, just yeah. like assault rifles. It, it is like as if you have like a bullet that doesn't kill but causes the most pain. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. for teaching. Yeah, and then they got things thrown at me. My most vivid memory was then, uh, so back in after Chinese school, like between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., there's yeah. two episodes of Inuyasha that ran right. on the TV channel. Okay. And we're only allowed to watch the first episode, and you gotta go to bed at 10.30. But then, but then you know, like you know, the the, the cliffhanger was too cliffhanger. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I stayed and watched like 15 minutes of the second episode. And next thing you know, I was like, hit, hit beat, and there was this one time I had to kneel on the floor with my sister um, until like 2 a.m. and then periodically yelled at and hit because we watched the extra 15 minutes. Holy! So it was like it was like serious, serious stuff. But that like that's when I was like, I think I was nine or ten. Right, right, yeah. How how did that so feel to, 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 to you then? Like what, what were you hit? Was it like a you kneel on the floor and then and then and then you're you're like naked? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> you're not naked. So so paint this the is not BDSM. Me. So so like you're not, not naked. naked. You have clothes on. I got clothes on. And yeah. then and then do are, are your hands cupped together as no, you're no, praying no, no, to? No 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 not cuffed. We don't have handcuffs. No 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 cupped cupped together. Like, no 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 they're not cupped. You're trying to think of some BDSM thing, right? And then you just close your eyes and then cupped together. And then he's like, no 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 no. I'm not thinking of BDSM. I'm trying to paint the picture. So so obviously when you're you're not like as I'm a saying kid, this concentration camp when shit you get hit, like when you get hit you're gonna kind of like flinch and try to run away yeah and then after you you get hit twice you run away and you're hiding behind the thing and, and, and then, your mom and is chasing like, you she's like, like, she's like assassin like throwing stars at you like well yeah there's chase method or there's like you hit and you run away and it's like get back here Neil oh yeah and then you gotta come back here right yeah so it's like there's different methods you can do it I mean I'm not saying that I'm gonna do that in the future I think it's yeah, a yeah yeah yeah. But I have memories of that, very Asian, probably like more extreme end of Asian. But my mom, like, if I go in deeper, like, you understand why my mom was the way she is. Right, right. And then the other ones, I think it started, the earliest memory I have was when I was doing this math book. Right. It was like multiplication tables yeah. when I was three. 
And every time I got a question wrong, <laughs> I would get hit. Three? I was literally three eight in multiplication tables. Oh, I remember shit. it. And whenever, whenever I got a question wrong, I'll, I'll be hit. So yeah. I'd be like, why do you get this wrong? Usually, usually like you don't get hit the first time because yeah. you're just kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. But when you get hit three wrong three times in a row, because you know you're just guessing and stuff. Yeah, and you get that's three hit. You, that's when you get hit. Yeah. So Holy. you know when it's coming. You know when it's coming. Holy shit, yeah. bro! Yo, I, I think my parents have deployed more of a positive reinforcement, meaning that yeah, if you get this, it's more of a white progressive, you know, way way of thinking. Is like, oh, if you get this right, I'll give you a reward. You'll get a candy, not like a like a ne- negative, a positive negative punishment. That's what they call it. Like, we, a, we, I had that too. Yeah. I think she tried with like Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon yeah, cards. Yeah, like, oh. But the thing is that like, <laughs> She's like no, no. it's not satisfying as fucking hitting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I no, the thing interesting thing is I got all these rewards for positive reinforcement. Yeah. But I also got the extreme end of mm-hmm. negative reinforcement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I got two. And that's because my mom was pretty unstable back then. Yeah. So that's why like sh- she had to resort to these two things. Mm. Right, right. I mean she didn't have to, but like I understand why. I understand yeah. why. At what age do you think you understood why? Like obviously when I you're going through, you're like, what the I fuck? Did you ever tell me at, at 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 eight you were like, yeah, I understand so, why. It, so because my mom was a single mom, mm-hmm. and uh, like I always saw her cry and stuff because of her situation, I was always very empathetic for her. Yeah. So even when a young age when she was hitting me, I would say stuff like, oh, in, in Cantonese is le tang o do oil means like even in if you hit me, I'll still love you. Oh. Right. So like, it would cause a very big conflict in her yeah but it was just the way i am like you I, said I, that at eight like, like four yeah it's like that stuff that four? oh my yeah. god yo it sounds like sounds like some kind of movie i want to cry for dude. yeah yeah, 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 yeah dude it sounds kind of sad now man no but when, when you start pre- painting this way then it's a little bit sad yeah. but like to Should me we... it's like it's more of the understanding yeah i didn't really Are understand why yeah. Is there a tear in your eye right now? No, I'm not. No, okay. but if, if I go a bit longer, I might actually have a tear in my eye. Yeah, we guys. might have to rename the episode called no. Edward Gets Therapy. Go on. <laughs> um, it was one of those things where like I always felt like I was understood what she was going through, but it wasn't until like I was older where I could actually like conceptualize and like say it out loud. Right. But now that I'm older, I can actually say it out loud, and like there's no. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing about like people saying like, "Oh, you know my." My, I am the way I am now. Yeah. Like if they're messed up because my parents are the way they are, they were to me. There also needs to be like an understanding about like what they were, what they were dealing with that time, in that moment of time. Mm-hmm. The parents, yeah, the parents themselves, yeah, as well as as well as um, um, like the different ways that it can it can manifest in you. Like it could, it brought you this way, or it could bring you another way. I see. You know, for me, it made me a very empathetic person towards my mom. Mm-hmm. For some people, it might be, it might lead them towards like hatred for their parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's different. Yeah. I got a really deep, really dark. Well, look I, 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 I don't know how to follow up. That's pretty. That's pretty. Does anybody dark. have any like, other? Do, do you like? Because you said that. You said that. <laughs> people say I am the way I am because of my parents, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that that is an excuse for not trying to own up and being in control of your own life, and you're blaming it on the on your parents, no matter how bad they were? Because your, your your parents. Like, you can actually relate. For me, if I say, oh, that's just a little excuse, you know, you, you're you making excuses for yourself. Yeah. I can't say that because of the fact that I never actually <laughs> went through any traumatic parental experience. I have, I think I had, to be honest, a golden Same. childhood. Right? So, when you hear that, can you relate? You can definitely relate, but do you think that's an excuse? I think that um, your life situation puts you in a like let's say like I have more of a chance of being fucked up yeah. but if I be fucked up at the end of the day it's still my responsibility mm-hmm. so it is still an excuse it's yeah. still an excuse like I saw this meme the other day it was like um, two people one was like homeless and the other one was like rich and then um, the same question was asked to them it was like why are you the way you are now and then both of their answers were because my my dad was an alcoholic mm-hmm. So like I can kind of relate that to like if you're mm. if you become depressed versus if you become a very empathetic person, you can answer those both of those questions by like because my parents were abusive. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You could think of it as like, oh, therefore I become very empathetic, I won't be abusive to my kids. Yeah. Or you can or you can answer that as like, oh, now I am pretty fucked up because my mom was abusive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. there's many ways you can take it. It's just how you respond to it so yes i do think it is partially an excuse you take that scenario of my mom being abusive and react in two different ways i think the way i would talk to someone with a similar scenario who ended up on the opposite side of the coin as me 
would be like, hey, I totally understand how you feel. Like, I can see why this is the case now. But there comes to, there gets to be a point where like, you go, you're responsible for your own life. Yeah. So you can't, you can't keep using that as an excuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That holds you back. I actually, um, I was listening to a podcast the other day. Was uh, it called Six Feet Under? That was Six Feet Under. It was a book. It was uh, your next you five. Then get the fuck out of the show, bro. Okay, fine. Okay, it was a book <laughs> called <laughs> Your Next Five Moves. Okay. But you know the girl on Shark Tank? Wait, wait, Tank? were you listening to a podcast or reading a book? A book, it was a book. Okay, so why would you I say that? Yeah, right, 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 right. It was a book. It was a book. It was a book. Okay, 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 okay. okay. The next five moves. And he's talking about how one of the Shark Tank people, Barbara Corcoran. Yeah. You know Barbara, right? She's yeah. a girl. She says that what she actually looks for in entrepreneurs is ones with a fucked up childhood. Like, she's like, you hit your parents much much more drive so like you 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 beat by your parents as a kid you you want to get back at them they have much more drive well so then, then i'm the opposite of what she would want because i don't want to get back on my mom or i, I don't, don't hit my parents but 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 i mean basically the point that they're trying to get at is i'm trying to make here is yeah. someone who has a rough childhood it can go in two directions one is yeah. it can go in the direction of ultimate drive to cons- to succeed in life and like prove the parents wrong yeah which happens to a lot of people or it can go in the direction of Oh my God, I'm so depressed. I'm so sad, and then end up homeless in the streets, yeah. right? Yeah. So I guess going back to what you said, where you said ultimately you are responsible no matter what the circumstance is. Yeah. I think that's an example of that. Where you know she says that she's a, she's obviously a real entrepreneur, and she says that you know she notices the more successful traits among those who had a rough childhood. Yeah. But do you feel like it's a double edged sword? It is big double edged sword because sword. on the other end, you you know al- although you say there's a lot of people that do this, people that yeah. don't respond well to this could be. Mental health issues, well, you know, anxious, depressed. Yeah. It, it cetera, wouldn't be a double edged sword in her in her scenario because if they got to that point already, she's an investor, right? That's exactly. already that's exactly. already. Do you, do you think that showing maybe ten percent of the popular, ten uh, percent of the people that do use it as a motivation rather than a than, than a handicap? If you look at people in general, wouldn't you say ninety percent of people just prefer to use things excuses in general anyway? Yeah, true, true. So yeah. it's not necessarily related to like rough childhood it's just mm-hmm. that when an excuse is given most people will use that as an excuse yeah you're right a lot of people use it as an excuse but the people who are great will use it as motivation mm-hmm. i guess is what she's getting at yeah like kobe Bryant, he was like yo you put me as wait, second wait. behind vince carter out iverson yeah. i use it as motivation yeah but, but right? kobe also didn't have a fucked up childhood. He's a pretty good decent exactly childhood. but what i'm saying is that among people with great childhoods yeah. is they may be less motivated because yeah. they, they, they had a spoiled childhood everything was going good in their life there's no fire right yeah so i guess that's where you know we'll go back to what we said earlier is is it uh, you, 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 you take a life i should have got beat more as a kid yeah you got more as a kid don't worry <laughs> guys, don't guys. If Parents, I get my beat your kids I'll, I'll beat your kids no, no, I, have a question for you. I have a question for you guys now um recently there has been a lot of peer reviewed journal articles okay. tying asian parenting especially their methods to mental health issues mm-hmm. okay so because of the fact that they take a more authoritative, hands-on approach, kids feel like as a result of that, my, how my parents raised me, I feel more anxious, more depressed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think there be a, a, there can be a case made for that? Do you think that you know using resorting to physical um, ways of you know teaching your kids is always the best thing to do? Because I know you're speaking for a small percentage of the population. Yes. I so think, am I though. Okay, fine. Let's speak more broad. Yeah. More, more of generally speaking. So the best way to look at it is like a a sine curve, right? Okay. Uh, a curve. Fucking nerd. Okay. Wait, so, a sine wave is this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so sine wave. Well, Basically. sine sine starts at zero. No. Wait. Are you, are you okay. Talking, are you ba- ba- bell curve. No, 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 no. A, a, no, a, 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 a sine curve. A sine curve. A sine curve. It goes like this. It goes like like okay. swiggly, swiggly. Basically, fucking nerd. The okay. way, <laughs> the way, the way, the way I look at it is. Okay. It uh, so. I think what we said earlier established about how, you know, all that stuff can really light a fire in people and make them more motivated. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it can also fuck them up a lot more. Yeah. So you're going to have larger amplitudes in both directions, right? Yeah. In terms of how messed up someone might be and how amazed someone might be okay. as a result of this, all this abuse and stuff. Okay. So... I mean, if you want to put it as abuse, then we can as, use as, a different as language. A result, as, a result, as a result of traditional Asian parents, okay. you're going to have great... Great people, you're gonna have yeah. very also very messed up people mentally. Okay. Well, but, as a but that's not the case though. That's not the case because like I would not say that there are more totally fucked up mentally Asian people than there are other races. I would not say that. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just saying we're talking a little too extreme right now. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about totally fucked up. Yo, man, I don't even know how to eat my own okay, food. Wait, kind say, of say, say a point again. Say a point, my, say a point my again. My point being is that recently they're on the internet and um, you know on, on like peer reviewed journals, a lot of people are studying the impacts of Tiger Mom or having the disciplined, authoritative way of raising your kids as being more mental health issues for the kids as they're growing up. Can I ask what they what they actually specify as Asian tiger parenting? Because okay, sure. my I'll scenario my scenario is extreme. Yeah, yeah. Your, yours, yours, yours is also extreme on the other end of the chill. No, yeah. mine mine is not on the extreme other end of chill though. Okay, mine mine is is yours a ter- is your tiger tiger parent? Not really, right? I think for academics and everything, they they were quite strict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they were quite strict. In terms of academics, in terms of all those things, the only thing is they they were like they understood. I was a kid growing up in the West. I'm gonna go out and drink and stuff. So they like go out and drink. Okay, so they define Asian parenting as authoritative, authoritarian, and very permissive. Permissive? Yeah. Okay. What does that word mean? You, you trying to you wait? You, you think I'm a thesaurus? I, I, no, no. I, I was I was hoping you guys knew what that word. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait, I was like, is it permissive? Is it permissive? Parents who are warm and nurturing but have minimal or no rules such exceptions. Permissive? Isn't that like give people permission? Parenting style. Okay. Um. Um. Well, fuck. Permissive. Taoist, Confucius. What? Allowing or characterized by great or excessive freedom of behavior. Are you sure it's very not permissive? Yeah, I think it's not permissive. Not permissive. Oh, very not permissive. Okay. Not permissive. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the tiger mom stereotype. Yeah. Is harmful. They're they're just saying it's harmful in terms of mental development for your kids. What your what are your takes on that? After being an Asian kid that has gone through that, what are your takes? Because we went through three difficulties, right? Sheldon was easy playing the video game on easy mode. Mine is probably medium, and yours is hard. I, I think I think I don't necessarily necessarily agree. Okay, I don't necessarily agree with that. Right. Yeah. Before you, how hard was yours? Let's establish how hard his was first. So his mom was hitting him with with kangers. Uh, give like your top three fucked up things. <clears throat> well, that was one thing in Yasha. So I, have, I actually don't have that fond memories of Yasha because <laughs> it caused me a lot of pain. Yeah. You know, by association. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's that. A lot of the f- uh, oh 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 um, it might be kind of personal. Yeah. But um, like weaponizing the kid in arguments between parents, right? Yeah. So like, I was used to like try to uh, sway my my dad or my mom with very very like you know uh, things, uh, some death threats, mm-hmm. right? Like family death threats and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh. A lot of hitting and um, like no freedom in terms of like doing anything I wanted. It was more so like you just got to follow this thing. Like like it would be like like stupid things like let's say I was sick mm-hmm. and I was coughing, right, in bed. I would get hit for coughing, mm. right? It's like it would be like, yo, I'm coughing, right? It's like yeah. this is, I'm sick. So it's going to be like maybe be a, like, co- stop a co- coughing. No, a couple weeks thing. It wouldn't be a stop coughing. It would be like. I cough or I get sick for any other reason. Like, let's say my classmate next to me is like sick, right? So he gets, she, he or she gives me the sickness. It would be my blame that I didn't put on enough clothes to keep myself warm at school. So therefore, I would deserve like a beating for a week. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So that, that okay, yeah. It's, so, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Yeah. So it's it, doesn't, it doesn't make any up. sense. Like, I'm, I, I, to this day, I'm still trying to tell my mom, like, hey, you know, you know that coldness doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean sickness. That's every. I was like, Every Asian kid has to explain that to their yeah, parents. I, I, the, the best way I explained it was like, if I'm in a room with a person with COVID, right, and I have 15 jackets on, I'm still gonna get COVID. Do you know what I mean? Your mom logic. Here's your mom like, nope. No, no, no. But but now cold she's temperatures tra- transmit like, COVID <laughs> at a faster rate. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, Based yeah, on yeah, my yeah. WeChat article. And I was like, right. Then what about 51 jackets? Yeah. <laughs> like like, like uh, now she's starting to get it because she's a lot more chill now. Yeah. But like like it was it was that's pretty a, messed point. up in that way. Uh, wait, okay, you want to talk about yours? What? I mean, like you asked me that question, so you can get a clear understanding of, of like from my perspective, right? Yeah, yeah, like, like, like yeah. So I want to know. Well, now I know. Okay, you had a fucked up childhood. So what's your perspective on that? My perspective is that maybe at like my level or like levels surpassing my level of what? Yes, of, oh, of, of oh. like a, a extreme parenting, right? Right, uh, or ext- extreme parenting abuse or whatever. Like yes, but 
um, yes, it has an effect on your mental health. Well, yes, it, it can lead to more like a mental health damaging. But like from what they're saying there, it means authoritative, non-permissive. Yeah. Like I think that's just strict parenting. And I think that necessarily, I think that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to be a strict parent. Mm-hmm. To an extent, yeah. It's, I think it's a good thing. So like I think that from like I don't see I, maybe Asians hide it better or whatever but like Asians are pretty successful in like North America and stuff right yeah and, and like we like maybe that thing is classifying mental health issues as like something that is not as severe I'm not sure like mm. maybe like I don't know what they're classifying as mental health issues right yeah but the thing is I don't see that much like me being Asian and me knowing a bunch of Asian people like I don't see that many Asian people surpassing other races being like oh yo i've got some like fucked up mental issue mental health issues right right you know like do, do you see that like do you know a lot of asian people more than like white people more than black people more than brown people or whatever that with have more mental health issues? yeah with more i don't necessarily see that i don't yeah i don't necessarily see that asians have more mental health issues I don't than see other that, races yeah. in particular but our parents are yes they're more strict than other other races yeah that's, that's pretty standard right yeah, yeah. so like it, it has not direct correlation that way I, I mean i agree like <laughs> Yeah, although although I will put the caveat that a lot of mental health is under the rug. Like it's, it's, not, un- it's not like everyone talks about it. Sure, but isn't way. it under the rug for everybody? Yeah, it's under the rug for everyone. Right? So the, like, ultimately, you don't really know. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, like, I joined this group called um, Subtle Asian Mental Health. Yeah. So I'm like constantly bombarded. I don't know with- if I should laugh at that. No, or, like, no, no, chuckle, no, no. Like, like I, I, no, it's, it's, no, it's, 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 it's a group. It's you, a group. You, you, I know, but like, it's a group of people that share this stuff. I, 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 I understand, was curious about but it. when you say subtle Asian in front of it, I just, I just want to go like, it's because of the subtle Asian tra- <laughs> traits and everything. Right. Like so that. they post memes. They don't post like, no, the, they don't post the pressing stories, right? <laughs> no, they post their, they post their stories. Like, oh, it's, it'll be for example, uh, I'm 21 and I'm still dealing with the trauma my mom left me as a child. So right? it's a serious wait, group. Wait, 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 serious can group. I, can I ask you since you're on there, how many from your experience are things that you read and be like, damn? That shit's mental health. Or how many are like, damn, that's kind of not really mental health, but it's like someone like like making okay. a big deal of something. That so really I, I read it all. In general, okay, it's a mix. So it's a mix. Wait, why are you mix. laughing, bro? It's a mix. And, and, it's no, topic, and, no, it's a mix because there's some where it's like, damn, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Um, and I can see why that would have lasting trauma today. There's listen, man, listen, man, the bar has set by Edward. Yeah. If it's not, there, yeah, there's bending some, on my knees until 2 a.m. That's not yeah. fucked up to there, me anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just saying. Like, the bar has been set. That's not fucked up. The bar has been set, okay? Yeah, okay. There's there's like alcoholic parents, okay. um, alcoholics, alcoholics beating their kids and stuff. There's a lot of stuff like that, yeah. to, that to that level, which is, I guess, on the same level as what you went through. There's definitely some that are a bit more like my parents just never said they were proud of me and stuff like that, and they yeah. feel they feel some type of way about that. Mm-hmm. And I think that... It, 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 like I can't really pinpoint to what, like everyone's different. I can't really say, oh, this what is a ten for me, what is a one for what is a ten for someone else? Even though it's, even if it's a three for me, is I, I can't discredit that it's a ten for yeah. them, right? Yeah. So it's hard for me to tell you like what's at scale because everyone's different. But wait, but wait. everyone in that group is dealing with impacts from Asian parenting on their mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you, let me ask you a question? Do you think a lot of their stories have similarities? Meaning that. Do you think that it's a very steer- can you group their experiences together as is a very Asian thing, or do you think yes. there is is all like very um you know like oh, like far apart like someone's alcoholic, the other person blah blah, blah. they're all general stories. What Co- do you think is a, a, a umbrella? There's for a Asian? collective where I noticed that it is generally Asian, Asian parenting related. Like okay. my parents never said they were proud of me. I was never enough for my parents. I'm gonna Stuff the like point. that. Alcoholic parents is not an Asian parent thing. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, 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 except, except for if it's Baijiu. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's alcoholism on Baijiu, it's an Asian parent thing. But if it's just regular, a couple of beers a day, that's not a. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm saying, that's, I'm not, saying, that's not. A, I'm saying yeah, like, parent thing. I agree. Like, you know, like that. That's something that's like probably there are much fewer alcoholic Asian parents than there are alcoholic white parents. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And also because, you know, Asian glow. Like, a lot yeah. of Asian people yeah, are allergic okay. to yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Like, Ronnie, yeah. for instance. So, I mean, there, those there's those cases, and there's right. the cases of, like, the ones where Asian parents are never proud of their kids, right. Asian parents beat their kids growing up, um, Asian parents never listen to anything the kids say, um, stuff like that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's break this down a little bit, okay? Let me ask you a question. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement that... Um, physical discipline is helpful. 
to your kids? Because I've been hit before, maybe not the extent that you have. Like I don't, I like they're not like choose your weapon kind of thing, but it's more so maybe a slap on the thing, a slap on the back of the head. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think what happened to you is good. Wait, what? I think what happened to you is I good. I was so traumatized, bro. Bro, from, I, I couldn't like f- from a, from yo, a slap you, you tell me on the wrist. When when man got hit by a hey, wait, wait, hold on a second. You are traumatized. Uh, yo, guys, I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're not validating my experience. Right, mate, Mike, I'm ba- kidding. But validated, honestly, validated, seriously, validated, seriously, but I think yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I think so. You agree on the fact that physical discipline is good. I, I think physical discipline for the purpose of of inflicting pain to teach someone like to 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 yeah. to disapprove negative behavior, right, is good. But I just don't think it should be caused excessively. Like once the guy gets the lesson, he gets the lesson. Okay, you know, like right. it's not like it's not like you gotta take your anger out. Right. You know, then you yeah. got anger issues. Yeah. See, it's see, just different. It's like, but you should, you know, like you give a little, little dog like a boop on the snout so he knows like, yeah. hey, this is not a good thing for me to do. Yeah. It's not like you are physically abusing the dog. You know what right. I mean? There's an extent. That's a dangerous uh, yeah. analogy to make. What? The Asian people are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dangerous that's, analogy to make. Okay, that's, I'm that's, yeah, I agree with that though. There's a line where it's like if you go to the extreme on either end, you're going to mess up. Right. Right. So if you don't give no physical physical um discipline at all yeah like a white parent yeah <laughs> your kids would be like shut up mom yeah. oh, okay, right okay so I my room. Um, on the other hand <laughs> if you if you're hitting your kid with hangers and like batons yeah then what are you doing right 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 so what what your yeah, you're basically your parents did what my parents did like slap on the wrist slap on like, the thing my dad the would give me a very hard yeah. high five yo that's pretty good man that's no pretty- no it's painful okay here, look let me show you okay. all right ready yeah, yeah. three two one yeah, he's it's, you, it's pretty painful, right? He's calling you weak. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling I, I you mean, weak. Uh, look, give me a little, like, little tingling for Okay, me. do one more, do one more, do one more. Ready? Three. Sean, wait, wait, Sheldon, don't take your anger out. Okay, right three. Now. It's like, <sighs> you just need something bad, right? It's like, like a this. sunburn. <laughs> okay. Yeah? It's pretty hard. It's pretty painful, yeah. right? I wouldn't so, say it's painful. It's, it's, like, it's like shocking. Right, right. It's like, oh, right. fuck, I fucked up. Well, okay, okay but Matt, okay, okay. Wait, if you're a kid, a kid, yeah, if you're kid, yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense, so, makes so, sense. so you would pass this on to the next generation. As in, like, if your kid fucks things up, flicking the penis, like, hit the back <laughs> of the head. Like, I'll give him, like, I'll give him a smack on the wrist. Smack, smack on the wrist. wrist. Yeah, I'll give him so, you wrist. think that the, the physical aspect of the discipline is positive? Yeah. There's positive, like, there's positive, things that there's come positives out of to it. it, there's negatives to excessive. Mm, yeah, right. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. I think people who go excessive, they are just taking out their own anger on their exactly, kids, I see. which is they, they got issues. The the the, yeah. the issue is that right there. Yeah, the issue. It's when when your parent is lashing out on their on their end. It's like yeah. mm. I, I'm I'm not gonna overanalyze your mom. It's weird, but I'll analyze your mom a no, little bit. Hundred percent. She was she was she, she was she was letting out her the, maybe hundred percent. Maybe that begging thing for Inuyasha was a result of her feeling lack of control over other things that went on in her life. No, no, no. She needs to, it, she it to show what, control. Uh, I'll, I'll tell anger. you why. It's because she, she thought, most likely in that moment, I put so much effort to raise this kid alone. I could have abandoned the kid. I could have left him up for adoption or whatever. Yeah. And he can't even listen to me as an authority figure, you know, and give me respect in that way. You know what? It's yeah. like, it's like hundred, in her eyes, like hundred percent self-sacrifice. Right. And in her end, it's like, and all he gives me is no respect. You know, that's that's okay. what it is. That's do, what it is. You, do you feel like that hitting thing, the physical discipline, is a sense of authority? As in, you physically discipline them, therefore you look at me as some sort of authoritative figure, rather than a white person approach would be... I mean, okay, I'm not trying to call out white people, right? <laughs> I, I feel like I'm being very racist right now. But, I mean, like, more of a Western approach, right? Go to your room. Short term, white guy, <laughs> is like, they looked at their parents as buds. A lot, of, a lot of white people go, hey, you know, my, my dad, a good old pal. You know, like, I don't look at my dad as a pal. I look at him as a figure. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So do you think that that if physical discipline establishes that? Because you wouldn't physically discipline your friends. I think, I you think it, it has. It has. Yes, it does. I think it is. So is it a positive thing? But like, for so, example, like me, in this society right now, yeah. there is figures who can take away my physical freedom. Mm-hmm. You know, lock me in jail if I if I fuck up and make this. Yeah, like the police, the police. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it can't just it's like imagine the police coming here and be like, "Bad boy, yeah, you did bad." Yeah. It's like that doesn't establish them as a figure. The fact that they actually have control over my physical body in yeah. some way and you know, on a weird way, <laughs> it's like they can put me in jail, right? They right. Take away my freedom, yeah. You know, like yes, makes that's what that's what 
authority is like in some, in many so ways. So you think uh, having a, a a parent should be an authority to the child? Parent hundred percent should be an authority to the child. Interesting. How about you? Do you think I think a parent should also be an authority to the child because otherwise you're gonna end up with just crazy children. Do Do you feel like you 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 and your dad are boys, or your your dad is your your dad? Like my dad is my dad. <laughs> right. My dad is my dad. Yeah, my dad. Like yeah. like it will never be a case like <laughs> white people where their dad is. Wait, no, wait, wait, Western, a Western take. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's white people. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's be I'm real. Saying, guys, yo, it's, it's white yo, people, bro. Jake from San Diego, if you're listening to this right now, I didn't say that. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's true, bro. Yeah, come on, man. Like, yeah. like, yo, um, like, I know Caribbean people, they have, like, I know African right. people, they have pretty strict parenting. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's, true. Uh, that's like, it's white people, bro. It is, yeah, Europeans okay. and North Americans. Yeah, Europeans and North Americans. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. is. It's white people. Interesting. But, um, I think they should be authority authoritative figures, and if they act as buds, then <laughs> buds. you're gonna you're gonna have sure you'll have you'll have some you have cases like for example um our friend our friend our friend Jake we met in San Diego yeah great fucking guy I I I could totally see yeah. I, I got I didn't I never asked him, but I could totally see his dad being a bud going up. Yeah. <laughs> like, just the way, the way his personality, I'm like, I could see I could see you and your dad being hey, like pal? such, no. such no. buds. But he could be a great guy. Do you maybe want to do your homework right now? But but <laughs> but I I don't see that authoritative figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. Um and so you can have cases like that where you, you end up with a great fucking guy. Like I like I was awesome, right? Yeah. But on the other hand, you can also end up with like the opposite end where you have these Wild, wild, wild people who just have no respect whatsoever for his, for for his rules and yeah. society, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's okay, not I saying there's that. there's a right way or a wrong way. I think what the Asian <laughs> a right way or a wrong what way. I th- well, there's no right way or wrong way, <laughs> but what the Asian parenting <laughs> method way. does is it allows you to have a more uniform mm-hmm. controlled group mm-hmm. of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of children. Like you, you can, you can, I can definitely say. Asian American children, in general, are less trouble troublemakers yeah. than other peers I've had in growing up. For yeah. sure, like, I I observe that everyone observes that. Okay. All right, Asian American ch- children generally like, like we're not getting kicked out of class. And yeah. Stuff, right? Like there's less there's, there's there's less outliers. There's more. There's, like we're very uniform. It's like yeah. your Asian, Asian American kid is gonna be this this nerd fucking kid yeah. who you know um follows the rules who is very very like, yeah. like good. He's, yeah, he's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. kid. There's no. Yeah. Outstanding, but also no terrible bad. I mean, yeah. we're outstanding at math. Yeah, we're outstanding at math. Yeah, yeah. We're but there's no outstanding, there's no terrible bad. It's true. So it's true. that's yeah. what the Asian parenting gets you, yeah. and it's good from a societal from, from a societal perspective it yeah. because it creates great, 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 great. But citizens, there are a few citizens. problems in terms of individualistic. Perspective, yeah, for right? individualistic perspectives, it definitely creates problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where the that's where the dichotomy is. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I was just gonna. Okay, no, this is not gonna make it into the podcast. One thing I never want to hear my kid call me is Edward. <laughs> if your kid calls you by your first name, it's game over, man. It's game over. You must, you might as well give it up for adoption. Yo, Edward, if 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 your kid <laughs> calls you by Edward, yeah. is it time to put them on their knees and send them into the the beat chamber? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're <laughs> not, we're not, we're not endorsing child I'm abuse kidding. here, okay? We're not endorsing child abuse. Adoption pounds. <laughs> no, 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 child. Yeah, we're not no, endorsing no, no. a child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the first time, the first time I heard people <laughs> call. Like, like my ex called her dad really? by her my ex ex called her dad by her by her first name, and and the mom by her first name. I was like, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go Charlie's place. I was like, <laughs> Charlie, what? is this your boyfriend? I'm like, is this your other boyfriend? I'm like, I'm like who who's this? <laughs> wait, she actually said yeah. that. Yeah. That's a cultural difference. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. wait no, like, oh, and, and in person. Hi, Charlie. Yeah. You're no. kidding. No yeah. way. Yeah, I, I was I was like I was like this is the greatest. Greatest sense of culture shock I will ever experience, yeah? ever. Yeah, yeah. Which is why it's weird because like my my, my current girlfriend is 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 uh, Lebanese, so yeah. like they're more similar to us, right? They're more traditional. But, but the thing is like when I when when I meet her parents, like do I call them my first name or do I say ye? Because I call I ye. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm racist to say like auntie. Yeah. Right, but there's got to be equivalent of that uncle like in, no, but in you don't Lebanese. call them, like I would just call him my first name, which which feels really weird for me. Wait, too. you call uh, uh, Pia's dad by yeah. his first name? I mean. I, I, I just say 
Like I try to avoid. Wait, wait, wait. Does she call her dad by her first no. name? But no. But you have to call her by first name. Well, I don't know. How am I, what am I supposed to say? No, there's no traditional thing in Lebanon that's like, oh, like uncle, aunt. I, no, I, I you can say equivalent. sir, but that's really formal. You know what I mean? No, but there's, there's no other words. The no, best no, no, way no, no, is no. just avoid names. Yeah, like, hey, that's what I do. I just don't no, I'm, like, I'm like, hey, Mr. and then I just direct the comment yeah. towards that person. Oh, yeah. that's I, see, I, I, see, I see. Because I don't want to feel like I'm like raised in a different culture. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. Let me go ask you real quick. So you're telling me with your ex ex, her who's white by the way. Yeah, she's American white. She said we're going to Charlie's house. Yeah. And you're like, who the fuck I, is Charlie? I was like, who the hell is Charlie? You got some major explaining to yeah. do. <laughs> who's Charlie? Why do you have to go to his yeah. house, right? So topic number two. I saw Sheldon's face immediately it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's like, is this gonna, is this gonna make it <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, final yeah. cut? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's not racist. Statistically, I'm pretty sure it's like most no, people no, that commit no, these I was, I was gonna say, outlandish like, crimes are it's clear because the most biggest population in America is white. So like yeah. come on. That's yeah, all obvious true. odds as well, right? So the next question is, so we talked about physical obe- uh, obedience and discipline, and we think that creating authority figure as a parent is a positive thing for the kid, right? Yes. Yes. Something to follow along, like uh, somebody to look up to, someone to like, you know, guide you through life almost. What do you feel about the idea that Asian parents have this barrier in terms of saying things like, I love you, I'm so proud of you, that aspect of it, do you think that that asks the authority figure? Or do you think that it is kind of like that something that needs to be changed uh, in, in terms of, you know, how you can raise your kids, et cetera, et cetera? Ha, that's a good question. I don't know if it's something that needs to be changed, but I know for me, it will definitely lean the side of more loving. That's because I grew up in this culture. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's just partially due to the culture that they grew up with. Right. But, I, but it's, it's true. Like, do you ever hear an authority figure Saying I love you to like their subjects. <laughs> Wait, I'm not. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, what I'm picturing right now is whether my grandma said I love you to my mom. She probably never and, did. And she probably never did. And this is why. Does, ha- but does my mom love my grandma any less? No, I don't think so. I and, wouldn't say and so. And I'm thinking, does she love my grandma out of responsibility, or does she love my grandma? From a more Western take, where is like empathy, compassion, et cetera, et cetera. That's a good question. I think you're again, I don't wanna judge your family here. Okay. But what you tell your mom yeah. I love you every day? I do. You do, yes. I do. Yes. Yeah. You you have a very but I I think me, I, I'm speaking for a lot of Asian kids out there who I think don't a lot that. of Asian parents love their grandparents like love their they love their parents out of responsibility. Mm-hmm. Other responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and and I I I view it in the. W- be really careful about your words here, man. Don't don't be judging <laughs> other people's families. Yeah. I, I'm, not, okay, I'm not trying to I'm judge kidding, other people's families. I'm kidding. It's but, fair. Just say it. Just say what's on it's, your mind. It's it's because there like there's no connection on that level in Asian families. Especially the more traditional you get, the more way back you get. You know what I mean? Right. It's like yes, your dad cares for you. Your dad. Especially as they get older as well, it's like you will have never had that deeper level. It's like it's like a it's like a it's like a love that will never go away, but it's a love out of responsibility and positions, as opposed to a love out of. That's true. It's it's different than white person love. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a white person love. It's, it's not explained. Like like white person love is is like you have done all this stuff for me, but also you are. My my one of my best friends. That's a white person parent. Oh, have, right. It's a, it's a hug. It's a hug. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's a, what a whereas, hug feels like. Whereas an Asian person love is, I know you've sacrificed so much for me. You are, you are always there for me. I can always count on you. But, but 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 but, but we don't. We can't really talk about things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I agree with Sheldon. I'm saying, for the like your mom. I think your mom, like Asian mom, will love their child purely. Like out of like maybe even more so. I'm not gonna judge this, but like they, they, it's very very pure. Like right. Mm-hmm. But whereas an Asian child, because that love is never expressed in that way, don't ne- doesn't not necessarily love their parents in a way that is like I love you, but it's more so of duty. Right. At least yes. at least that's the case for like traditional Asian parents. For example, maybe like now it's starting to change because like we grew up in a different, yeah. more, like a more of a mixed hybrid culture. Yeah. But for example, like your grandparent passed away, right? 
Yeah, my, you're, you're, yeah. Going oh, you're just shooting in the dark right now. No, no, no. So, <laughs> you're so, like, yeah, you're like, your grandparents passed away. Both of you guys. Both of you guys. One thing Asian parents, like your dad or your dad or your dad, will do is like, instead of like, thinking about like, oh, I need to be there with him for his last moments because I love him so much, is they'll say stuff like, as a son, I need to be there. It's a duty as right, a son. Right, right, So that right. tells you, that like, it tells you what they're thinking. They're right. thinking that, I'm sad, but it's as my duty that this is, as a son, I need to be there for is, him. Is that necessarily bad? Asian, like, Chinese culture is, a lot of it is really rooted in duty, Duty, and things yeah. that you're responsibility, like, honor. It's an expectation. Uh, I hate the word honor because it sounds like I've watched actually fucking Mulan. Yeah. But like, it's an expectation for you to be there. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a good thing, but I think that it'd be even better with the other element as well. Yeah. Whereas I mean. in a Western society, it's it's a. This is my best friend. You know what I mean? Like my mom's yeah. my best friend, and she know she's yeah, this is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas in Asian, it's like, oh, it's my duty. It's like I, l- I love my mom, and I, well, I mean, I, mean I, think, I think my mom is also my friend as well, so it's different. But for well, your for traditional, more traditional cases, yeah. there, there's there's a difference. I I I can't explain what the yeah. difference is because you've been brainwashed by the Asian culture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm but there there is a difference because one is you sacrificed so much for me, and you are my friend, and the other is you sacrificed so much for me, and that's it. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you sacrificed so much for me, and that's it. I, I think the Asian sense of duty is something that's very very good. But I also think that with this extra element of like love in the more Western sense, I think the relationship between Asian parents can be even better. I think that's what it's missing. I think a lot of people maybe like the subtle Asian mental, mental health. health thing is that they're suffering from something where like they feel like their relationship with their parents is pure duty, yeah, right, and not enough love. Yeah, I mean, right. The the the, be- the best example of that is um we were in, we were in L A. and our friend Eli. Got a bunch of packages of We're Not Really Strangers. And he was like, you guys want some, right? There's We're Not Really Strangers friends, We're Not Really Strangers couple, and We're Not Really Strangers family. And all three of us were like, oh, yeah, I'll take couple. I'll take friends. I'm not taking family. Yeah, we're, not, yeah. we're not playing that with like, you don't I'm play like, that with your family. That's we strange. Play, we're not, but but, but strange. Eli, so our friend Eli, he is um, he's adopted. Yeah. He's white parents. He's like, yeah, I'm going to play with my family. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's the difference. No, like you, you can connect with your like you, co- they connect with their parents on a deeper level than um, than, than, than Asian people. Yeah. and the reason why is because like the type of conversations they have. Like one time, me and Sheldon were at the airport. We were like eating our food at the lounge, and then there's like this son. Uh, you were there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a time oh, when yeah, we saw This son was telling his dad about all the chicks he smashed. Because, <laughs> how weird is that? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, he was like, yo, and yo, Jesse, man, Jesse was a fine thing. And he's showing his dad yeah, the girl. Yeah. And his dad's like, nice. Yeah, like, yeah, what the his like, fuck? His dad's like, yo, I, but I like the, I like the, uh, the, the Cassandra more. You know, like, I like yeah, the yeah. other girls a little bit sweeter. Yeah. I was like, bro, this is blowing my mind. And the mom was there too. Yeah. The, mom was, the mom was like, yo, yo. So you hooked up with her the first night? I was like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah. Yo, do you our, want, do you want that relationship with your kids? No, I think it's strange. I, I think it's strange, but. Because I was talking to Sandy, and Sandy wants that. Sandy's like, yeah, I want to know who they're hooking up with. And, you know, I want to be like, I, I, I want to be in, in, in that level of yeah. I, I'm going to say one thing is Ronnie's, Ronnie's a producer right now laughing behind the camera because he has, he like, he's Asian and he has a very similar experience with his parents. Yeah. yeah. But I just wonder, like, if it's conflicting. If you push the narrative in this way, does that mean your kid is less likely inclined to listen to you as an authoritative figure? The question, the question is, go down that as the that. friendship increases, does the authority decrease? decrease? I can see that. I it's a balance, that. but which it's one? You guys, like you guys said, you think authority is more important, right? You think it, as a parent or a role of being a parent, authority is more important than it is to be buddy-buddy. You know, so me up, here's homie. the perfect answer to this that I just realized. Okay. All right, All right Einstein. Asian parent until 18, then go white. How do you? How do you do that? How do you just do the change the relationship like that? Like I can't say I love you to my mom. I could say I love to you guys. I could say I love you to my girlfriend, but I have a blockage where I cannot say I love you to my mom. You're, like, I love- You're conditioned. You're conditioned for 18 years. But, but what if your mom, the second you turn 18, no, starts saying I love you to you? No, 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 no. Let me let me tell you exactly what happens. So for 18 years, my parents tell me not to date. Blah, blah blah. I don't talk about them about girlfriends. As soon as it turned 19, my mom said, "How many girls you smashed?" She asked you that? No, no. As in, like, is that what you're picturing in your head? As soon as you turn 19, you're going to be like, oh boy, what are the girls you're fucking right now? <laughs> like, you're not going to do that if for 18 years no, of his life. No, it'll be a gradual transition as they get to be 20. Like, it, I think it's fair because 
Okay, one big thing I noticed in Southern Asian Mental Health Group is people saying, I'm 25, why is my mom still trying to control my life? Right? Mm. That's a very big issue, especially in, with, among Asians. Right. That their parents control them until they're fucking 30. Like, yeah. they're 30 and their parents are still trying to have impact on their life. Yeah. Whereas with white parents, at 18, yeah. Get the fuck they're, out. they're saying, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I quote it too. Buddy, you're on your own. <laughs> like that. That's a white thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but <laughs> but uh, but but maybe 18 is a little bit early. Yeah. But I think at 21, I think that's when, uh, uh, for me as a parent, I'm going white mode. You're going like, white mode. I'm going Asian until 21, and then I'm going white. That's, that's actually. I think that's actually the optimal strategy. Actually, yeah. To be honest, I think I think a- Asian parenting is pretty elite yeah. to get their kids up like yeah. the social hierarchy. Yeah. Right? right, but once you go past, then Asian people are like, "Bro, like I'm 30. Why are you trying to make? Why are you trying to live with me for? You exactly. Know? It's like yeah. th- then you might want to go white mode. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty might, that's a pretty pretty good strategy. Actually. I might take it one step further, and then I might go white mode from zero to four, <laughs> and then Asian mode from four to sixteen, mm-hmm. and then white mode from sixteen to seventeen. And then and then and then eighteen onwards, eighteen to twenty one Asian mode, and then white Wait, mode. I understand, but why would you want white mode in sixteen and seventeen? Because I feel like that's a um that, that, that's when you should connect them with their early formative years. Where Wait, you so you want like, to hey, talk you know, about sex and stuff? Like, like no, be like, hey, you know, I drive you to this party. I'm a cool parent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in with the times. Like, I want to be viewed as a guy that's like embarrassing. Like oh man, my it, parents. It, it's are true here. as well because you also want your kid to want to hang out with you. Yeah, you you like, basically want to play best behavior with a kid between yeah. the ages of but sixteen and seventeen. To because that game, I want that game brings people close together. It's true. It's yeah. true. This is the greatest board game of all time. Maybe you don't want to play with your with, with your kids because yeah, like you're you, kissing them and stuff. You can play like the the the, the low yeah. level version. Look, but like this lo- is a fun look, drinking game to play with your parents for the low level version. Once they go white high mode. school version. Once no, once they go white mode. Let me tell you, I would play this with my kid, but I would expect them to clean the game up after. Yeah, oh yeah, there you go. get what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's the relationship I want. I want the relationship where I could play this with my kid, and then after that, the things are over. I'd be like, it's time to clean up, and they'll like pack it up and put it. Yeah. In. That's that's a properly raised Asian kid. Yeah, that's a proper. That's a that's, uh, yeah. That's that's, that's relationship. Because if I'm playing with with a bud, that's right. like all right, we'll clean it up afterwards. Yeah, I don't like even when I'm 40 and my kid's like 23, like. I'm not your butt to that level. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I'm, I'm still your respect dad. Dad. as a father. But yeah. just to let you know, guys, that's a drinking game that that has three different levels in it. A drinking game that we made that has three different levels in it. The lower level is something you can play with your family potentially. The higher level you don't want to play with your family because yeah. it includes kissing. It yeah. includes talking about maybe PG. I mean, R-rated topics. A little racy thing. A little racy. Then- it's supposed to bring people together to get them to hook up. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> unless you want to hook up with your parents, you're from Alabama or something. From you Alabama. don't want to go too hard with yeah. that. From yeah. Alabama. But it's a fun game. It's just disclaimer. Just disclaimer. It's a fun game. So the final thing is I, I want to ask is like, what element of... Okay, no, we kind of already asked that. Um, so last thing... Okay, last two things. Um, so how much of your success today do you owe to your parents? Because there's a lot of this in the Asian community. It says, my immigrant parents did this, came all the way here. I owe them X, Y, Z. And a lot of people on their internet are saying, hey, man, you know what? You don't owe them anything. You know, you're your own entity. You go, girl. Like, you go thing. Because that that owing part is a guilt. And you shouldn't carry that guilt with you. So how do you feel about that? Well, you owe it to your parents first off for, um, For, for having sex and making you. Yeah, that's number one. But, um, but can I not owe it to my grandparents? Can I not owe it to Genghis Khan? Like, <laughs> you know, like I, I can owe it all. You could backtrack this all the way back and say, man, I owe it to that fucking person right. to you do this, you to, your to create for, this kind of opportunity. For raising you and feeding you. But Genghis yeah. Khan didn't feed you, bro. Yeah, Genghis Khan yeah. just smashed and dipped. Yeah, but he fed my great, 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 great grandpa. Yeah. And then he that fed my great, 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 great. Yeah. But, but you, you get my point. I, thing, get, right? I get your point. For me personally, um, do I feel like I owe it to my parents? I do. Mm-hmm. Um, they raised and instilled in me good habits. Yeah, what they percent? raised what percent? <laughs> what percent? Think of pie chart. Yeah, think of a Excel pie chart. Like, what would be the big? Okay, bigger let's let's would, it be, would okay. it be a Pac-Man? Let's ignore let's ignore things like environment. And okay. let's ignore let's let's focus on things that of like how you are. Okay, okay, like your personality. So ignore like for example, like I was raised in a more up- upscale community, for example, which obviously put me around better people right right th- those are things that's like wait wait but that's also your parents choice to put you there right like okay okay then you know in that case it's like it's hard i'm 100 bro 
100% bro like, yeah, They raised me in a good environment have, Like yeah. I, I had internet which, which let me Like you can't make that comparison Because Here, it's hard to say I think the best way to put it Is that If they did not have you Would they be living in a great place Or is it that They had you So they, they hustled Like a million times harder Than they ever would have before So they can put you in a good place Think of it that way like, I think your parents are decent Doing well decent Before you were born right Yeah is that right? Or I wrong? think so, yeah. Yeah, like it's like one of those things where it's like, let's say like you, you're born and then your mom takes on five jobs. Like that's yeah. 100%. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yes. guess. Right? Uh, uh, are you done? No, you go. You go. <laughs> okay. I don't want to take the spotlight away if you're yeah. not done yet. But I'm like a 97. Because I feel like I resonate with what you just said there. I feel like the only reason my parents moved to Markham is the fact that they want to give me a better high school to go to. Because mm -hmm. I've been raised in a more like um, rundown area. Yeah. And then um, the reason, like my mom did work two jobs. And the reason why they came to Canada is also so I can have a better future here. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, large partly is like 97, 98%. The other two I just want to keep for myself. Yeah, yeah. So I can't say a hundred percent. I I honestly think, for my mom, it is like a hundred and like ten percent. But the problem is that she kind of used like a Maple Story Dark Scroll. Yeah. Yeah. So like she she basically like it's one of those things where it's like I owe it all to her, but she she took a huge gamble, you know. Oh yeah. She yeah. she's like I'm either forge like a like a like a really good kid. Or I'm I'm gonna create the most fucked up. Kid but but ever. it's more of a <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Right? But, but it's more of a 70, 30, right? For what? Yeah, like the dark uh, school, uh, like like seventy success rate, yeah, thirty. But yeah, it yeah, would be yeah. fucked up if it was thirty percent success rate and seventy percent risk. Yeah, I mean, I would say like uh, it was pretty risky, man. Pretty risky. She, she could have she made a really fucked up kid. Pretty risky, yeah. She could have made a really fucked up kid. But like for example, like it's like Holy as a single parent, you know, like yeah, you know, I, I was like I, I didn't even need to be born. Like she could have boarded me, and then they could have left me up for adoption. Like yeah. all this stuff, like could have tossed me over like to a boarding school, and my dad. Yeah could pay for you know a lot of this stuff like that and then choosing to put me in all that stuff like working jobs uh like going through like a lot of stress like i definitely 100 100 percent 100 percent but it's just that i don't think she raised me the right way that it's probably the most mm -hmm. conducive to success but i guess she got she got she got lucky right mm -hmm. so what percent you know? would you say you owe 100 percent with a lot of luck okay yeah okay. how about you sheldon if you go over below 95 you know that you i mean look like a big yeah asshole, i mean right? i guess in, i guess in 95 yeah 95 you know like they put me in consideration they put me they enrolled me in a lot of different program stuff growing up and encouraged me to pursue my interest even though my mom was really trying to encourage me to do engineering yeah but they they instilled in me like hard work mm -hmm. and i think that they are examples i look to myself in terms of entrepreneurs as well so you know when i That's realized that the greatest way to wrap up this podcast was what is that like <clears throat> with i love you mom no no at the end of the day it's like we all have things that we kind of like maybe uh how do i say that Fuck what's what's that word where you like kind of dislike someone, or that you hold this grudge? What's kind of, you you all you you all have. What is that word? You know that word that have your um, um fuck uh, our Chinese really your reservations now, about bro. something? No, you're, no, no, no reservation. It's, 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 it's a uh, fuck, man. Resentment. We're, resentment. We're yes. Fuck man. Yeah. We're white. We would just okay, know yeah, it right yeah, off yeah, the bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all have we all have like a little some like some resentment for our parents. By the end of the day, I think like if you're out there, you're struggling to like connect with your parents in this in, in a deeper way. I think the the way we we all start is like kind of like acknowledging the fact that they went through a lot for us and giving them some of the credit for the good things that we are. I think once yeah. you start to realize that, then you can start to have deeper conversations with your parents to all the people out there who might be struggling with that same thing, or mm. even with like the subtle Asian mental, mental health, health crew, thing, right? Yeah. I see. Come from a more you compassionate I mean? standpoint. Yeah, come from a bit more compassionate standpoint about like things that they sacrifices they had to make to get us to where we are now. Right. Mm -hmm. And right? that opens the conversation. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like that's that's a good way. It's a good how way to think you, of it, and that will that'll get us pretty far. Yeah. That's deep. But how do you not feel about like? Don't you feel some sort of resentment that you're raised below six feet? I'm a little bit of resentment. Yeah. My but mom feels resentment herself that she yeah, raised yeah, you below six yeah. feet. My, my mom. She too. she always says she's like. Man, I wish I I, she's like, she's like if, I made you, if, 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 if I made you sleep earlier, I, I know you're gonna say that's no, weird. That, that's okay, I'm, I mean, it's a joke. Okay, Sean, that's that's jeans, bro. She's like, I know, I know. But she always says if I made you sleep earlier, if I fed you more bone soup, if I made you drink more milk, that's and then you'd be a little Radio taller. Milk. Yeah, that was, that was the thing. That's, 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 that's probably it's probably just thing. I know, but she holds resentment to herself. No, my mom, my mom, my mom makes joke resentments towards my grandparents because they're basically like, like dwarfs. Oh yeah, mm, but yeah. she 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 broke the mold, and you're breaking the mold too. And then the next no, one, she, next she, generation, like, you're gonna break the mold stupid. again. You should have chose to become like your dad. Yeah, my dad's like six. My mom's like, 
How five the fuck one. do you choose to become six? No, <laughs> she's like, in the womb, you should have chose. Oh. oh. Yeah, so, so yeah, but yo, it doesn't matter, yo, because this is the six feet under podcast yeah, yeah. where we embrace everything. Yeah. And we learn it, and we put all the shit that's negative exactly, six yeah. feet under. You know, including, that shit. including the negative aspects about Asian parenting. We only look at the positives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we ponder on the negatives, but we learn to spin yeah. that off. Into yeah, the but we learn to, 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 to become passionate. See yeah, we learn from. to use that so that we can become okay. more positive about our life and stuff. That's right, true. right, right. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, this exactly. is more of a somber ending to this one. It's yeah, not, it's not okay. more of a thing. But yeah, I mean, that's it for <coughs> for this week, guys. That's it for this week, guys. Remember, if you guys are dealing with something with your parents, look at the positives. Uh, build and then look at the positives. You can start building a better relationship with your parents starting now, depending on how you choose to view things. Yeah. And you want to put that all that negative stuff. Six, six feet, feet under. under. Okay. All right. Catch you next time.